with all this moisture dripping out of here. Hey guys, been a few days since I've uploaded. Um, I've done a couple little mods to the Borla. Um, it just wasn't lining up correctly on, on the flange part of it. Like no matter how many times I disconnected, reconnected, turned it upside down, because there's no indicator of what's top and bottom, so it really looked like it was just, you know, it could go either way. But um, no matter how you have it set up, it seems to not line up and it lets a little bit of air out. And I'm not 100% familiar with exhaust systems, but is there supposed to be a very small amount of exhaust that gets let out? Because I took a photo of the actual muffler and it's not like a mist weld or anything, but there are tiny holes and I can feel air coming out of them. So I don't know if it's just like a small pressure release system or if it was just a total error on the design by Borla. But it's on both mufflers and it's just these, I don't know, not a pinhole, a little bit bigger than that. Almost like um, a tiny bit smaller than the width of like a pencil and it lets a little bit of air out, so, um, you know, I'm just assuming that it's okay for a little bit of air to get out, and it's not going to affect our performance that much. Um, so yeah, my Borla is completed, it just feels incomplete in my mind, but I'm, I've just let it go. I did go to Home Depot and buy this, like, little exhaust flange, like, um, not glue, but sealant, and I'm just... You know, I ended up talking myself out of using that after I bought it because I don't want to have all this crap all over my exhaust. And then if that doesn't work, then you're just stuck with a stupid sound or a stupid looking final product. Um, and then another thing I, I always look at at the beginning of every month is just like automotive sales and trends and how everything's looking for different companies. And Mazda looks like their sales overall are decent. Um, they're slightly ahead of the, the trend, the downward trend of the auto industry, but the Mazda 3 sales are scary. Um, I printed out the whole April statement that, uh, or sales figures that Mazda puts out. But the Mazda 3 sales for April were down 44%. So they went from selling, I believe, 11,000 units last year in April to about 5,000 uh, this past April. And um, they're making up for it with their SUV sales. The CX-5 sales are, are up a ton. I think they were up 20%. But... Um, you know, Mazda 3 just had their their mid-cycle refresh, if it was even considered that, just the, the body update and the G-vectoring and whatnot, but um, I thought sales figures would, would go up a tiny bit or beat the trends. Um, the Toyota Corolla sales are down, the Honda Civic sales are down, and the Honda Civic was like a brand new redesign, so... Um, that's only, I think, it's second year into that, and they're down. Um, but the Mazda 3 was way off par with that. So um, I have my top five um, worst selling brands year to date and top five best selling brands year to date that I'll go over here in a second. And um, it's interesting to see some of the names on these lists because. Some brands are very reliable, and they're not selling well, and then other brands are not reliable, and they're selling about at the same rate as, you know, their counterparts that are reliable, so the consumers aren't looking for reliable vehicles, I, I guess. I mean, if that is what the numbers are showing, um, I don't know what the indicator is for which brands are selling best or what brands need to do to sell better so here I'm gonna 
uh, go over this um, back of my house. Okay, so as I was saying while I was driving, um, automotive sales trends are down. So, um, you know, people just aren't buying new cars like they were last year. And it was kind of predicted, but I like to look every month. Usually I look at Mazda and just maybe a select few other companies because that's a true indicator of how the company is doing. So like I said, um, other compacts, I threw in the Corolla and Civic just to see. Uh, the Corolla sold 29,000 in April of this year, which was down 5.8%. Year to date, they've sold 105,000, down 87 The Civic has sold 31,000 this past April, down 8.3%. Year to date, Civic sales are at 112,000, down 7.1%. So they're just about 7,000 on, on the year ahead of the Corolla, which to me is surprising. I mean, when you compare those two cars, one is just like an appliance, and the Civic is now, with their redesign, like one of the best driving cars out there. It looks good. Um, personally, I think it looks great from the front, but the rear is just, you know, but that's a whole different topic here. And then the Mazda 3 last month sold just a hair under 6,000, which was down 44%. Um, and then year to date, they've sold 26,000 units, down 19.1%. So year to date, the Mazda 3 hasn't even sold as much as the Civic and the Corolla sold in April. So that's a little scary, especially how good of a car to me the Mazda 3 is. Um, so I'm not sure how buyers go about searching for vehicles, but it's kind of strange. Um, overall brands, Mazda sold 24,000 units in April, down 7.8%. 93,000 on the year, which is positive 2.6%. So their SUVs thrown in there are just really helping them out. Um, Honda sold 124,000 units in April, down 6.3%. And 400. 57,000 units year-to-date, positive 1.2%. Toyota has sold 179,000 units in April, down 3.5%, and 650,000 units, down 4.5%. And that's just Honda and Toyota, not their full brand of like luxury and whatnot. Um, and then I threw in Hyundai and Kia because those are kind of bigger names on the rise the last within the last decade, I guess. So 61,000 units from Hyundai in April, down 0.9%. 225,000 units year to date, down 4.4%. And Kia sold 53,000 units, down 5.6% in April. And year to date, 181,000 units, down 10.7% year to date. So they're down quite a bit. Um, and I mean, when you just, you know, look and like my gauge was always how many you see out on the road and you know I feel like I see a fair amount of like new cars coming from a lot of these brands but it's interesting to see you know if they're up or down compared to last year so here's my top five year-to-date numbers top five best-selling brands and then bottom five brands um, so the top five we'll start with um, there were two ties, so there ends up being more than five. But Subaru and Mitsubishi are positive 7.6% on the year. Subaru, that's not surprising. They have a lot of new vehicles, um, redesigns. Um, but Mitsubishi, wow. I don't know what they're even selling these days, to be honest with you. I mean, they redesigned the Mirage, and I've seen them. They aren't exactly the most attractive vehicles. Um, but, I mean, their overall sales numbers... Um, like the raw number of units they've sold is very low. Um, so the next two, VW and Audi, are tied, positive 7.7%. So, I mean, coming from Volkswagen, um, coming out of that whole, you know, controversy with the diesels, you know, it's surprising to see that their brand is positive 7.7%. So they have a loyal fan base, it seems like. Um, Number two is Infinity, positive 26.1%. And then the number one is Jaguar, up 140% year to date. That's huge. So, um, kind of like Mitsubishi. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what Jaguar is selling these days. I mean, I know they have like 
the performance model, like the F types and and their um, you know larger SUVs, but um, not too familiar with their brand. Um, and then there were two um, call outs, but they don't really sell high volume. They're very low. Maserati is up 37.3% year to date. And then Alfa Romeo, with all their new vehicle launches and stuff, um, they're up 722% year to date. So I don't even think they were selling vehicles last year, the year before that. I mean, I don't know what they were selling. So they're really just coming out with new models. So that's why I didn't include them in like the top five, but I just mentioned them. So the top five negative brands or on, on decreases. Um, Jeep is down 12.6% year to date. Fiat is down 12.9% year to date. Acura down 15.1% year to date. Lexus down 15.3%. And then this is the big one. Chrysler is down 27.1%. So Earlier when I said I was extremely surprised at some of these, I mean, Fiat and Jeep, very unreliable brands, you know, based on consumer reports, research, and product feedback from the consumers. Um, but Lexus, the number one reliable brand, and they've come out with so many new vehicles, like the redesigns, their SUVs. I think their SUVs look great. The front ends, some of them, I don't know, they might be like over-the-top designs, but when you see them out on the road, I mean, they look great. And then being so reliable, you think would be a selling factor because people seem to be going for like the reliable brands these days. Um, but Lexus, yeah, down 15%. Um, and then Acura, I know they're redesigning the TLX and they have their launch within the next month or two, I believe. Um, but yeah, their brand to me is kind of stale at this point. So I understand why they're down 15%, but being down less than Lexus is just surprising to me. So um, I plan on doing this monthly. Um, I'll go over like month to date numbers of uh, compacts and maybe like the top five uh, per month. I just did year to date because this is the first time I'm doing this, but I'm a very like an analytical kind of guy. And I just, I'm always looking at these numbers to see which brands are doing the best and whatnot. So I thought I'd share it now that I'm doing uh, more videos on here. Um, so yeah. All right. Thanks for watching.